My name is Ben, I'm a filmmaker and a visual effects artist, and this is a scene that I made in Blender. Uh, it's a shot of a train crossing a river in Dublin City, and it is 100% computer generated. And this video is going to be covering how you can make something like this yourself. So let's jump into it. Step one is I recommend using Google Earth's 3D data. Uh, so I'm going to leave a link to a tutorial on how to do this in the description, but basically there's a process that allows you to download the 3D data that Google uses to render cities in Google Earth, and you can then import that into Blender. The process is a little bit difficult, but I think it's worth it because once you've done it, you'll see that you end up with something that looks like this. And already this looks amazing. I couldn't believe it when I did this for the first time. Perfectly proportioned, accurate geometry that is already textured for you, and it was just a few clicks of a mouse. It's amazing. Um, and this is already a massive bulk of the work done, as you can see. I mean, you do ostensibly already have a city. <laughs> if you want to be really lazy, you can just set up a camera and photograph this and you're done. Um, but what I think this gives you is two choices. Either you can use this as your 3D model that you're going to light and photograph, or you can use it as a reference and build your own city on top of it. I went with sort of a blend of those two options. I mostly use the Google Earth geometry, but occasionally I would remodel something if Google Earth hadn't done a great job. The reason you might want to do it all from scratch is if you need to edit any of the geometry for whatever reason, it's not going to be particularly easy because, as you can see, the topology here is an absolute mess. And if you need to try and do anything with the mesh itself, it's going to be much easier to just build it yourself. But if you are rendering a real city, you probably don't want to change anything. So for most of the process, the Google Earth data is going to be perfect. Step two is to find your shot. I recommend setting up your camera early and try to approximate the shot or shots that you are going to need of your city and allow that to define your workspace. And anything outside of the field of view of the camera, you can delete. Um, I do recommend giving yourself a little leeway here because you might find that you want to change your shot later. But the reason you want to do this is because cities are insanely dense and detailed. And if you take one little segment of a city as we're doing, uh, the amount of detail in it is just infinite. So we're going to have to cut corners somewhere. And to do that, we need to know where the focus of our shot is going to be. So I knew I wanted this shot of the train going across the river. So the level of detail in the shot falls off fairly proportionally the further away from the bridge that we get. And that's good because there's no point wasting time modeling areas that are not going to be visible to the camera. Yeah, even, for example, the other side of the bridge and the other side of these buildings in the shot, none of those have been worked on at all because I knew I was never going to see them from that side. So I recommend adding your camera first, finding your shot roughly, and then starting your work. So as not to waste any time or energy on things that are not going to be seen by the camera. Step three is to work from reference. And this is particularly important if you're trying to make a real city uh, as opposed to an invented sci-fi city or something like that. Um, so figure out what you're making and find real photo and video reference. Use Google Street View, that's very helpful, or take reference photos yourself, even better. But make sure that before you start working, you are getting things correct. And I didn't do this because I felt I knew this area of Dublin pretty well and I had an image in my mind that I thought was right. And I realized after working on this for a few days that I had just done things like placed all my street lamps in the wrong place and I had cars going down one-way streets and all this sort of stuff. Uh, so I recommend to save yourself from a lot of headaches to work from reference from the very beginning. So the fourth step is to light your scene. Um, and you might expect this to be a lighter step, but the reason I put it here is for the same reason as finding your shot. There's, there's no point working too hard on a part of the scene if it's not going to be lit. So the first thing you need to decide here is, are you making a daytime scene or a nighttime scene? And that's going to be dictated by the specific needs of your project. And there's advantages to both. Uh, nighttime scenes are darker and CG tends to look better in the dark because you can hide a lot of your mistakes in the shadows. Um, however, the built-in textures from Google Earth are daylit. In fact, they have baked in shadows. So that's something you need to think about if you're doing a daylit scene. And it can actually work to your advantage if you add in a sun lamp into your scene and match up the shadows uh, that it casts with the real shadows from the Google Earth imagery. But if you're doing a night scene, the lighting can be a little more involved. Um, so what I did was I started with a HDRI um, to get some ambient moonlight and, and just 360 lighting all around. Uh, I turned the strength way down so it was very, very dim because most of the light in the city is going to be coming from street lamps, which are the thing that I added next. And for this, I just modeled a simple street lamp, uh, placed a little point light in the top uh, and adjusted the wattage of the bulb to be accurate. 
And the great thing about using the Google Earth geometry is that it's scaled accurately, so you can actually use the correct wattage of bulbs. And then once you have your street lamp and it looks good, you can use Alt-D to duplicate a linked version and just start placing that around your streets. And the difference this makes off the bat is huge. It just starts to look good really quickly. Um, and look at your reference photos, find out where the actual street lamps are and place lights accordingly. And now because we've duplicated linked versions, we can adjust the light values of one of the lamps and it adjusts all of them. Get this part right and it does a massive amount of work in making the city feel real. And so once you have your basic lighting done, we can move on to step five, which is to add life. Now it's time to bring the city to life, to introduce all of the things that make a city feel like a city. People, cars, buses, trains, all these sorts of things. And the value of these for your city is that they just add kinetic energy. You really just want to be adding as much movement as you can into the scene, because unless it's meant to be the dead of night, um, you want the city to feel alive. So assuming that you have some focal point, like this train crossing the bridge, you can afford to be a little bit lazy here. <laughs> um, I modeled one car, I didn't even model it, I actually bought it online. It might have been free, I, I can't remember, but I had one car, uh, one bus that I did model, and I'll show you that later, it's appalling. Uh, one person, <laughs> and I sort of just used them everywhere, and you know, changed the color of the car occasionally, and changed the color of the headlights. And um, this part's actually really fun. Uh, pop a car on the road, Line it up with the street markings, add a keyframe to the location rotation, go to the end of your shot, move the car, add another one, duplicate the car, offset the keyframe, and there you go, now you've got cars driving through the city. Add a bus, this is just a cube with a picture of a bus on it, <laughs> add some people walking on the street, they can just be animated mannequins with image textures of people, they're going to be tiny in the frame so you don't need to focus on making them look too good. So step six is to add detail and chaos. Uh, initially, these were two separate steps, but I decided to make them the same thing because they really are the same sort of principle. Um, one of the shortcomings of Google Earth is that there are certain things it cannot render, uh, street lamps, uh, traffic lights, fences, trees, rivers, windows, all of these things it'll try to do, but it's it's it, it can't get a tree correct because it doesn't have enough geometry and it, it can't get a window correct because it's not gonna be reflecting the actual details of your scene they're just they're just baked in reflections from the photograph that the satellite took adding them into a shot like this is actually really easy all i did was create a plane shape it to the size of, of one of the windows on this building uh, duplicate it into a row duplicate the row along the height of the building and then assign the windows a glass material and boom you've got windows uh, pick a few random windows here and there and assign them an emissive material and now there's lights on in the building a river can be a flat plane with a glass material. Now, this is an old Ian Hubert trick, but add a Musgrave texture and keyframe the z-axis. Move to the end of the clip and change the value and keyframe that, and now you've got flowing water. Traffic lights, trees, maybe a little bit of fog to help the light carry across the scene. These things all just make your city feel authentic and chaotic. And this is the step where you can just keep going for as long as you need. You can add in puddles and moths and exhaust fumes from cars and wind blowing the trees and so on and so forth. You just have to decide for yourself what level of detail is sufficient for the shot that you are designing. Whenever you feel like you've added enough detail for your shot, you can render it out now. And when you look at it, if you're like me, you're going to immediately feel disappointed because despite all of your work, despite all the detail and the chaos you put into it, it just doesn't feel real. And the reason for that, and this is true of any render, not just of a city, is that the computer is rendering a mathematically perfect version of the scene. And if there's one thing we've established that we don't want, it's perfection. <laughs> if we were trying to imply that a real camera filmed this uh, with a real camera operator, as always, we just need to go in and fuck it up a little bit. It's too perfect looking at this point, so we need to color grade it. And I'm not going to go into a tutorial here on color grading and compositing, but the general point to keep in your head, as always, is just to make it chaotic and make it less perfect. Don't try to generate the perfect version of this shot. Try to generate the version of this shot that was the best you could get. Because that's always the case on if, if you're actually filming something. You never get the perfect version, you just get the version that's your best effort. And there's always problems, so generate a noisy, underexposed, slightly out of focus image, and you should get something like this. So there you go. Thanks for watching.